Good evening and welcome to the first select board meeting for Sunderland of 2021. Welcome to a new year. It's got to be better than the last one. So here's, here's hoping. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Tonight, we've got our minutes. We're going to discuss the adoption of the Sunderland Hazard Mitigation Plan, uh, discuss a complete streets contract award, um, a quick uh, discussion on the update on 120 North Main, and then our COVID-19 update, and then any um, select board and town administrator updates. So without further ado, um, let's do the minutes of December 28th, our last meeting. <clears throat> Motion. I will second. All right. All those in favor of the minutes of December 28th? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on that one, Jeff. All right. So next up on our new business, we have the our adoption of our Sunderland Hazard Mitigation Plan, which we've we spent a little bit of time on in the past, I think, you know. Yeah. <laughs> This is sort of like putting the bow on the gift. I mean, that's a, <clears throat> it's been a, quite a lot of work on that that we've done, a lot of meetings and everything. And uh, the, the COG has put a lot of effort into it. And um, that's going to do us a lot of favors in terms of other things too, which is good. <clears throat> well, it means 10 more years of work. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. Let's be perfectly clear about it. You know? Yep. It's, it's right. you know, the effort that was put in by the folks, the COG, as well as the participants here in town hall and boards and committees really helped formulate a, a, a solid plan. But now it's time to implement some of the strategies. Exactly. <clears throat> and it's, uh, I mean, it's a good thing to have in place too, because you never know what kind of hazards will pop up. And they usually pop up when you least expect it. So, <clears throat> point. So if I could, Mr. Chair, we have a yeah. we have a resolution to adopt. I see this language only a couple of times now. And Jeff, could you clarify why it's in the form of a resolution as opposed to a move to approve? Um, I, that is what the COG recommended okay. is a, a vote uh, to adopt and then signing a resolution of adoption. Always leery. Thank you for that. I'm always leery yeah. about the whole, all of the whereases. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. Somehow I'll, this language serves a purpose, I assume, and I, I don't mean I don't mean that lightly. Yeah. <clears throat> um, can you pull it up for a second, Jeff? Sure. Um... If it's not super long, I can read it. The yeah. mitigation plan? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Oh, hey, we didn't tell the you mitigation that. Plan? <laughs> it's, All it's right. Three-inch, three-ring yeah. binder, David. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I was talking about the resolution, but we could okay. if you wanted to, you know. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. All right. In the beginning. Yes. So, <laughs> All right. So how about I go through the uh, – I'll read the resolution, then we can um, – Actually, we should probably vote to adopt it first, right, Jeff? And then do the um, yeah. So, like, take a vote on that, and then I can then I can read it, and then we can vote on the resolution. Do they want one per or I, just? One? I don't think you need one. I think one vote's fine. Okay. All right. So I'll read it, and then um, and then we right. can we can that do it sense. that way. All right. This is the certificate. Excuse me. Certificate of Adoption for the Town of Sunderland, Massachusetts, the resolution adopting the Town of Sunderland's Hazard Mitigation Plan. <clears throat> I have to put on my best Sam the Eagle Muppets voice here. Whereas the Town of Sunderland established a committee to prepare the 2020 Hazard Mitigation Plan. And whereas the Town of Sunderland Hazard Mitigation Plan contains several potential future projects to mitigate potential impacts from natural hazards in the Town of Sunderland. And whereas a duly noted public meeting was held by the Select Board on January 4th, 2021, which would be today. Whereas the Town of Sunderland authorizes responsible departments and or agencies to execute their responsibilities demonstrated in the plan. That's a typo, we got a little executes. Thank you. Now, <laughs> now, therefore, there I feel like I have to say, now, therefore, be it resolved. 
that the Town of Sunderland Select Board adopts the 2020 Hazard Mitigation Plan in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40. So do we have a motion um, to adopt the Hazard Mitigation Plan? Motion. I'd second for discussion. Yep, great. I'd um, like to contest based on the rules of this house to be able to contest the whereas's. <laughs> I say that tongue, tongue in cheek. I'll second yeah. for vote. <laughs> all right. All those in all those in favor, despite the whereas's. All, right. I, <laughs> all right. Three to zero on that. And and I'd like to actually personally thank like everybody involved too, because this like you were saying, Scott, this this was a result of a lot of meetings, a lot of work, and a lot of effort by a lot of people to come up with this. So um, it's one of those things, kind of like an insurance policy. Hopefully we never use it, but you know, it's, it's there and it's in place if we ever do need it. So a perfect world that also affords us a platform, excuse mm. me, the basis for applying for grants to help us pay for some of these items. Exactly. And that's, that's always important, <clears throat> especially now a lot of funding is tied to grants and which is then usually tied to conditions for some kind of planning and things like that, which actually is a good idea. Yep. So. <clears throat> All right, uh, next up we have 120 North Main Street. <clears throat> we, were, we had discussed uh, that we had some folks in last week. Um, now what's up, what was on our agenda for this part of the discussion, Jeff, today? Um, oh, there's Laura. Uh, How are you? I, I think that there were two things. Um, one was I, I can, give you an update since last Monday's meeting. Um, Laura and I and the building inspector and uh, OPM and, and uh, general contractor had a meeting this morning and uh, okay. came up with a plan. I'm still waiting for a little bit of uh, feedback from town council on how to proceed, but I think that um, we are working to a resolution um, on the, the building permit and, and third party inspectors. Um, and I think the other thing that was potentially up for discussion was um, the approval of the final plans. I think that was a, a condition. And so I had reached out to the 120 North Main Street Committee chair just to confirm that they had reviewed and approved and um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say due to the holiday season, I have not gotten a response confirming that, that they did review and finalize that. Um, I was hoping to have one by now, but okay. um, so I, I don't know. I mean, I know that that they, I won't say I know, I believe that there was a quorum at the last ZBA meeting where they went over the plans and um, didn't raise any particular issues or concerns. Um, so I, I haven't heard any any reason why not to, but if you um, want to await that final, you know, confirmation from them, um, okay. I think that was the other thing. Is it, was there anything else, Laura, that, that you were looking for this evening in particular? No, I mean, I just, I just hopped on to kind of follow along um, I think we're mostly concerned about the building permit um, in terms of timeliness, so. Okay, yeah, and we can do that, right. And as long as that keeps rolling, then we can do that at our next meeting if, if we get you know, the approval in for that. So that's good, yeah. okay. All right, great. <clears throat> oh, so I, I don't really think there's, there's a lot of, I, I think we are all in agreement that they were pretty much set with the, the plan building permit, right? The, how it's supposed to work. Scott, don't, don't. I am. Um, there was the question right. with respect. Not I am, with respect to the uh, nod in the language that says the select board needs to, you know, have that that final vote. I guess is probably the best term. We dealt. We created a working group to help shepherd the process. That working group worked all the way through the design phases up to and including the ZBA meetings. So, it, in my perspective. That group participated as agents of the board 
and went all the way through the process, if it's simply a meeting, excuse me, if it's simply a function of a vote tonight to move, check that box for uh, our uh, legal agreement with RDI, I'm more than comfortable with the way the process unfolded. Yeah. We don't have, a, we don't have any emails. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything that's opposing the design. There's a lot of give and take with respect to the design. And uh, the final product is something that uh, the working group clearly in the ZBA as well, not that that's required, but well, it is required, I should say, um, are, are behind it. So I'm of the mindset that tonight we can, I can certainly make a motion uh, in supporting the design if that helps move one thing off the list. Yeah, that's fine. That'd be good. Then we can talk about the actual permit and application, Tom. I think maybe where you were headed. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I I, I don't think we have to stress this thing out, do we? No, no, there's no point. I mean, I'm David, Chairman. I would agree. No stretching. Uh, that's the case. Then, I, if, in keeping with the language of our agreement with RDI, I would move that the board approve the final design. I think exactly. that's the language you're looking for, right, Laura? Yeah, that's definitely part of what that's one you thing. reserved. You reserved that right within the yep. option agreement. So if you vote it tonight and we get a copy of the minutes, that would be okay. helpful. That's great. And I believe you seconded, right, Tom? Yes, I did. All right. All those in favor of the approval of the plans for 120 Aye. North Main Street? Aye. Aye. All right. Three to zero on that one. So, And if you can just shoot off a copy of the minutes, Jeff, to Laura, that'd be great. Do you well, need it certified okay. or any uh, anything like that, Laura? No. But you can't just do send that me the minutes. Next, some attorney, I'm meeting. sure some attorney will want it certified. You never know, but yep. yeah. you want to have it's the approved your, minutes. It's your so you town to council. To, your town council. To, yeah, we have to wait the next. Looking for it, so she'll she'll trust you. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and then I just would mention the discussion with the building inspector this morning. You know, it, it seemed like he wanted three to four weeks to review a set of plans once he got them. Okay. And it's not as yet designated who will be doing that review. So I know Jeff is working on it, but it's kind of high on our minds right. in terms of timeliness so that we don't get a delayed construction start. Okay. And I so uh, review prior to issuing the permit, Laura and Jeff. That's what he was saying. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have stamp stamp set of drawings, right? Yep. And the ZBA, I assume, has some function of review. Is that during construction or is that conditions? Um, so it's the building permit that we're we're wanting, which right, right, building. Right inspector issues. The ZBA will be having its own uh, peer engineer Got it. do some site work review, okay. but it's kind of parallel to what happens in the formal building permit process. Okay. The, reason, the reason I ask the question um, is that, you know, having layers for the sake of layers isn't necessarily, I would think a goal, personally speaking, as a member of the board, uh, certainly not a member of, of this board. Uh, and if there are any ways that we can have that um, reviewed so that another set of eyes isn't just duplicating all of the work that one agency is doing for another agency yeah. to another agency, I'd like, to, I'd like to find a way to streamline parts of that. That's yeah. probably likely post building permit, if I was guessing. It, your building official is asking for his own reviewer. So you may talk with him about that, but um, I did mention last week, all the different eyes that we would be bringing because of we have so much public funding in it to the, to the project. Yep. But in the end, the building inspector has to be comfortable feeling like he has knowledge and time. And um, so we're trying to make sure he gets to that place um, and just, hoping it doesn't take a long time. That's all. <laughs> Got it. And you said the best timeline for a building permit in hand is end of February, no later. That's like drop dead. Well, I was hoping end of January because of January. we're going to be entering our closing process now. Got um, it. And people get 
basically other people stop doing what they need to do if they see that you're not really ready. Um, and having a building permit is an essential go, no go kind of item to close yeah. and to transfer the property. Um, so it does seem, you know, just time is of the essence to resolve who the building inspector wants to use and yeah. to get that person on board so they can review plans. That, that is one of your critical path items. Yep. It is. Yeah. That's why you'll see me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we left yeah. last week, if I could, Mr. Chair, with homework. The building inspector was going to search out some yes. proposals and then assign some or, or estimate some own um, time. Uh, personal time and what those costs would be. Is that still a work in progress, Jeff? Yeah, I, I think he's, we, we've... Uh, put a finer point on it, but I don't think we have a, a, a final number at this point yet. Yeah. And so, I think there's questions so. about procurement process, which are very, can, can take some time. So question, so if we, does, does that, so let's say our, our, our third party review finds and makes changes, requires changes to the plans. And then the plans are found later on to be defective or a, a problem with the plans. Doesn't the town now own the responsibility if we made them change the plan? Question. No, so um, typically an inspector will be looking for code compliance rather than design issues. And often there's debate about code compliance between the architect and engineers and a building official. And if they really don't agree, they'll probably go to a state building official for an opinion. Um, so it gets worked out as you go along. Um, this is also what's called controlled construction, which means that the architect, structural engineer, mechanical engineer, they all have to certify the design was right. built up according to the design and according to code and sign a document in blood and stamp it yeah. and send it to the building inspector before he issues a certificate of occupancy. So there's a lot of protections. I think the building inspector is looking for someone who can do some of the legwork um, and then would report to him if there were issues. I mean, that's how I understand it. Does that seem right to you, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it, it's sort of the the more frequent check-ins or hit the third party's availability to to be on there and then keep the building inspector informed. No, but I, but I'm I'm saying right now that the, the, with the design review, I I understand how the I understand how the the I, I believe I understand how the process is having someone on to. To look at what's happening and as a building is construction, but not not to issue the permit until you know we're going to have people review the That's plan. Good. good question. The plans now, right? So so and and what I'm thinking if if I'm having people, am I not resume if it and I say we're finding that your um fire protection isn't the right, doesn't meet the same code, the right code, right? And we insist that you change. And then later on, there, we came out with a problem and said, oh, well, we made a mistake that you guys were actually right. Well, who now who pays a change order to fix it? I don't know. <laughs> I, well, I, I, to me, it's just, it's just liability at that point, yep. right? I mean, really, the, the building inspector's function is to look for zoning compliance um, and building code compliance. Absolutely. And that's what they review the plans for. And they would flag anything they thought was non-compliant. And then, and, and it will happen. It happens on every job. There will be a conversation back and forth between the design professionals because some of the code is esoteric and complex and it changes. Um, so if everybody is not on the same page, usually there's an arbiter. Often it's a state building inspector or state inspector who will yeah. give an opinion on that. Absolutely. And everybody's looking for that 
either uniformity of opinion or yeah. an overriding opinion. Yeah. And it's around the issue of liability that you've named. And, and as I'm talking to council, I'll, I'll make sure that 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 point is addressed to, I mean, I'd imagine we're gonna to have to hire a contract out with this third party inspector and there'll be some liability concerns or insurance that they have to carry that, um, that, that would cover that type of issue, I, I would imagine. Yeah. So but on, that, on that procurement yeah. side, if I could, Mr. Chair, the, Municipal procurement, right? We're essentially, let's, let, me, let me back up. We're essentially looking for a uh, third party that the building inspector is comfortable with for plan review and probably some site, site visits, et cetera. There'll be contract language for deliverables, right? Yeah. Pretty straightforward. So why does it matter if we hire them or if RDI hires them? If the building inspector is, is you know, happy with Scott Co., right? for the deliverable of services, I wouldn't RDI hire them and have the deliverables simply be joined to RDI and the building inspector. It's still a third party to everybody, really. I, I think that the building inspector <clears throat> has some, con I don't know if you can hear me, I just got a yeah, internet good. connection You're unstable. Yep. Um, the, I think the building inspector has a, if the town doesn't hire them, then there will be at least a perception that it's not an independent uh, review if they're hired directly by RDI. Okay. Okay. Just a matter of perception in that sense. Oh, I mean, I the deliverables are the same. It's a matter of who writes the check. Right. I say that only in, in the context of municipal appropriation, right? If it's a contracted service over fifty thousand dollars, I'm making numbers up. It can become complicated quickly. Yep, and I think what we're exploring is uh, alternatives, and I think that there's a provision for. Oh, there's a the result of his internet. Uh oh, there goes Jeff. <laughs> He's the, the second time he froze. Uh oh. <laughs> Okay. He's back. back. There okay. he is. Um, it, we're, we're looking at, at alternative options. I mean, one of the things that Laura suggested is what if we have an intermunicipal agreement for uh, an inspector from another town to come over and do something. Sure. So, oh. so Tom, you, you've seen these before and I've worked with these before and I'm sure Dave has as well. Uh, do we have the authority to do an SGO for here? Right. I, I, I think I, I, I understand. I understand what the concerns are. This, the concern is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and again, it's not an adversarial. No. Oh, not at all. Right. You know, we're so I, I'm not. And again, that, you know, both a 40B, there's 40Bs and there's 40Bs, you right. know, there's friendly 40Bs and there's agreed 40Bs. So, mm -hmm. I, I, and we, we've dealt with both of them. So I, I'm sure that the last 40B that we had, the building inspector used good judgment and, and had made sure that it was separated out, but. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't have a, I personally don't have a problem if RDI pays direct. That, that makes total sense to me. But. Uh oh, you went away. Oh. I, yeah, I'm think, trying to see if you're all frozen in me in my screen, so I'm trying to see yeah. if this helps oh. at all. Hi, yep. Jeff. <laughs> and, and again, I, I, I mean, if, if they want, if they want, if they want to do the uh, procurement thing, that's fine, but. But I, I, if it goes over fifty thousand, then we're putting in the central registry and blah 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 blah. It gets it gets much more complicated. So. Yeah. The other challenge for us was just not knowing what the scope was that the building inspector wants. Oh, he, he, yeah. Well, he ha he has to write the scope. 
Uh, right, he's going to define that up front, right? Right, he ha he has to write the scope, and so, and that, that that in itself that that could take weeks to write. So unless he has, <laughs> yeah. So it seems to be you know a little bit of one of those things that is spiraling a bit. It, that it shouldn't yep. be quite this complicated, but we're we're we'll see we'll see what happens next. Um, <laughs> But we are we are very concerned about just being able to get the permit in hand in time to close on the property and close on the financing. That's kind of our right. all mechanics, logistics, and costs aside, kind of eyes on the prize, um, so that we can get that there. So That's sort of like your starting gun on the starting line. So right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nope. Sounds like we'll be doing more homework and be back at it next week. Yep. I, I, yeah. th I think that we should have, it's, we, we, we need to make sure that, that everybody understands the importance of having it done. Yeah. And that, that we mm -hmm. have to have the scope of work, everything is ready to go for next week. I would agree. So there's, there's our first item agenda for next week, Jeff. I think as the year goes on, we may just have a little standing every other week, 120, or actually just say North Main Street update with what's going on, because there'll be a lot of action up on North Main. Good point. You know? Yeah. In fact, I want to stick around to hear if you're going to award the road work to see who that's going to. Oh, that's a DOT award that's been done. Okay. Yes. Can, yeah. Can you tell me who it is? This is it Baltazar, isn't it, Tom? Baltazar. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that is a DOT project. All we had to do was come up with three hundred plus thousand dollars worth of engineering money. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And wait. And wait. Wait patiently. Right, right, wait and wait and exactly. wait. Exactly. And then, of course, then there's the discussion of the intersection too. So. Right. Which is a whole separate, but yeah. related item. Separate so. project. Yep. <laughs> That'll yeah. be more waiting. <laughs> so. All right. Um, anything else uh, any, we want to cover on 120 North Main tonight? So uh, Jeff's, Jeff's going to join us tomorrow morning for a, a, what's called a business meeting call with the, all the funders. Okay. And so then he may come back to you guys with some homework. I think the pressing question is whether the town wants to do its own affordable housing and regulatory agreements or sign on with what's with called mass docs with the other funders. Yep. And I, I'm sure Jeff's already flag that for the um, town council. So yeah. you'll be know. hearing more about that because everybody wants to know. Right, that's another another thing, yep, a key yep. thing. Yeah, I remember we talked about that last week. So, okay, all right. We're gonna talk about it until it's settled. <laughs> uh, uh, that yeah. makes sense, that makes sense, yep. That's it for me, thanks. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming, appreciate sure. it. Sure. So then that sort of leads into a, a sort of a nice segue into our Complete Streets Contract Award. Um, do you want to pull anything up for that, Jeff, at all? Or? Nope. We just shifted boxes and then blacked out. Sorry. Can no, that's me? okay. Yep, I can hear you. Uh, I, I can try. I don't know what the unstable internet is. Yeah. <laughs> you see anything? I can, oh, do you know what? Do you want me to pull it up? I can probably just pull it up if you want. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't. It's, I it's in our package. Yeah, oh, that's where I'm going to go. Um, so that, just go out to, let's see. Is that showing up? Uh, let me slip back over. Yes, there we go. Okay, sorry, I was. On there, trying to put up. Perfect. Okay. So there's our list, and this is for our upcoming complete streets project. Correct. And so it looks like our top one was the one, the low bid, yeah. right? This is an increasing uh, bid bid order. Yep. Is it more? Uh, I'm going to make sure I pronounce it right. Is it Moray Con Concrete Services? Is that how it's pronounced? No. Yep. Okay. And just as a refresher, do you want to just update folks on where, which project this is? Because I know we've had a number of them over the, over the last few years. So Yeah, so 
uh, this project is um, all stripe signage. Who? Oh. I think you just froze again. The uh, uh, the east side of South Main Street, um, widening the sidewalk so that it matches the west side. And yeah. then, uh, no, I think I got those reversed. Yeah, it's reversed. It's reversed. OK. Uh, widening the west. Yes. Yeah. And I know there were some issues with like roots and things like that along the sidewalk. It's cropped up over the years. Um, widening the west to match. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, along South Silver Lane, uh, installing a new sidewalk yep. um, from Old Amherst Road, about two thousand feet down South Silver. Yep, that's the one we did the site review for a little while back. Okay. Maybe you, good. yeah. <laughs> you could try if it if it keeps doing that. You could try turning off your video. That might cut the bandwidth a little bit. Because I don't think there's a requirement to be video present. How's that? You can you? I I don't know. I think we'll, we'll okay. try it. Yep. So I can hear you fine now. So okay. All right. Probably my kids using the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gaming or something, right? Okay. All right. So <clears throat> the only question I have, Mr. Chair, is is the low bidders experience with this kind of work, um, both in the complete streets format, but also, you know, their 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 company name is Concrete. So I'm just curious. And it's there is not I mean the spread is pretty uniform actually across all the way. We're in the twenties and the low is about thirteen less than 13, 13 below the next higher bid. Yep. Always just want to ask that question, you know, why low was something missed? And then are they experienced in complete streets work in this format? Yeah, so I, I'm not, uh, I don't think we asked specifically about their experience doing complete streets, but we did check a number of their references um, because it was significantly below the, the next lowest bidder. And um, we oh, wanted yeah. to make sure, and, and they, they've done a number of projects in Massachusetts and Connecticut. And, um, you know, most of the, the responses that we got following up on the on similar type projects, sidewalks, roadway projects um, were, were very positive. Uh, any issues that the municipalities had had were were minor and remedied fairly quickly. So um, we felt confident in uh, moving forward, and that there was nothing to the point of disqualifying their their bid based on the references that we checked. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate yeah. that. Well, if that's the case, I'd move to move to enter the agreement for the complete streets with uh, Murray Concrete Services of Springfield, Massachusetts for $252,698.20. All right, thank you. Do we have a second? Second. second? All right, all those in favor of awarding to Murray Concrete Services, Inc.? Aye. Aye. All right. So that'll be good to have that moving along. <clears throat> all right. And looks like next on our agenda is our COVID-19 state of emergency update. And I don't think, oh, there she is. I had to scroll down because I had the, the little vertical strip there. How are you, Lori? Good. How are you guys tonight? Good. Good. Thanks. We had, hope you had a good holiday. You did. Nice and quiet. <laughs> there you go. I, that seems to be a theme this year. Definitely. <laughs> yep. Um, so the numbers that came out on the 31st are looking good for Sunderland. We're headed in the downward trajectory. Um, however, I think the next report that comes out, we're gonna be a little higher. Um, I, I do that. have, yeah, um, 
I have a few more than 10. I have 13 for the past two weeks. Okay. You know, based on the data that I have in front of me, um, which isn't too bad. Yep. Isn't too bad. So, um, and then I see Governor Baker today um, talked about the rollout of the vaccine for first responders. Yeah. And um, Franklin County will be in, all of Franklin County will be in Greenfield at the Greenfield Senior Center. And that will start next Monday. There'll be a website opening up for first responders to make appointments. Oh, good. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's very good. <sighs> um, is it possible for me to ask a question about the sure. COVID about the vaccines? Sure. Um, is uh, will Sunderland administration have a role in informing residents about vaccine ability and distribution? When we find out. Yeah. I think this would be the format here. How, how are you going to tell people? That's my my thing is, you know, how are you going to inform the residents? Do you have a list of seniors? Yes. Do, do we? Yeah. I think, I think we'll probably use a number of, you know, I, I would imagine we'd have it on the website. We'd probably do uh, channel 15. We would do um, probably a, a phone message as well. And at the senior center itself. Closely. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was, like for the testing, we didn't see much communication. There was nothing on 15. There wasn't, um, um, you know, like the last thing for testing, there was a text and an email, but no voice call. And, um, and the first one that they had for testing, it was incorrect information. So we're, you know, okay. we're just, you know, is there an accurate, you know, how are you going to, is there any like email or um, communications to the seniors directly at all? You know, a lot of, some of the seniors don't have computers. So putting it on the website isn't going to help. Well, right. That's why and we texting do. isn't going to help and email isn't going to help. Um, and if, if, you know, if Sunderland's going to be proactive, is there, is there a way since it's going to be a while, probably February before, before the seniors come out. The other one, do you have a list of people with comorbidities? And, well, um, the, can you first, first, what you, first what you have to do is understand what the priorities are set by the, by the Massachusetts government. Mm -hmm. So right, right now we're in what they call phase one. Yep. Yep. I know the phase. Okay. okay. And, and you know how many sections of phase one it, there are? Right. There's quite a few. There, yeah. There's, there's five sections of phase one. There's when we are in one a, and I think we are right now into one B that, that extends all the way to, to one A, B, C, D, E, F. Mm -hmm. I think it goes to F. Um, and, out of, and, and, and out of, and, First responders, um, police, fire, EMS, are the only non-healthcare people in that first in phase one. So phase phase one A, one B, one C is the EMS responders, first responders, D, E, and F are all healthcare healthcare field people and residents of. When you go, the next phase is phase two is when you start looking into the um, elders. And right. that'll, that'll be, I, once we get into phase two, it's just not the town of Sunderland that'll, that'll be pu publicizing it. It'll be publicized by the state and the, the medical CVS, Walgreens, right. all those other places at the same time Sunland is working with Deerfield and Whiteley and Conway with our EDSs to make our EDS available. So there, there, there are going to be, there, there's going to be a multitude, not just the town of Sunland, but a multitude of notifications that seniors and people that fall into different classes of the, or the different parts of the phase are notified. Um, I, I understand. I'm, I'm, what I'm looking for is something that, you know, proactive so that, you know, you don't wait till phase two to figure out how to tell the people in phase two. 
um, what to do. You know, um, that, that, that if there's a problem with communications that it gets fixed before phase two starts. And, and one of them would be the, the, the beginning of phase two is people with comorbidities. And, you know, I don't know if Sunderland has any idea no. if there are people that, you know. No. We don't have I, that I know. information. No. And I would accept, I would expect at least my doctor's office told me that they would be reaching out as well once they find out information. So I would imagine um, your, your doctor's offices will also contact you as well. Yeah, if I may, I, I think you're right. The doctor's offices, uh, the EDS, there, there are lots of entities. Each one may have some information and some good intentions. As a resident of Sunderland, it's hard to know what is the town's responsibility, if any. And let's say as a, as a resident, what can I count on the town being responsible for? What can I help the town with mm -hmm. if there are these responsibilities? Mm -hmm. And there's this list, you know, there's parts A and parts, you know, B and one through six and all this. It's, it's uh, that last mile of getting the, the shot into the arm. Um, you have to have the people at, at the receiving end understanding where they show up and when and what line they're supposed to be in. And it's hard to know who to turn to for this information. I mean, we know sort of the state is making these rules. The state's an awfully vague notion <laughs> is the state going to tell me that because I have such and such a disease, I can go such and such a place on Tuesday? Yep. If not, can the town help me? Can I help the town? The, 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 the town, but I, I can tell you from the, the town, the town's perspective, that the, the town has worked for the last six, seven, eight years doing EDS, if you gave us 5,000 vials today, tomorrow, we would we could have an uh, EDS up and running tomorrow. Right. Yeah, because we've we done that for the, the flu. Right. We don't, we don't, we don't, now, we, we have let this, we have let the state know that our district, which in Deerfield is a, Deerfield has put in the application because Deerfield has the uh, refrigeration that, that the, Frontier Health or group has so they have we have refrigeration. Um, we they have put in the app. They, they are the lead agency. So if you hear Deerfield, it's going to be Sunderland as well. Sunderland, Whiteley, Conway. We 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 can put our. We've been practicing. We have these plans. We have. We could do. It's very frustrating for us because we know we could we could go tomorrow. We have volunteers. If you want to volunteer to to work on them. <laughs> we've asked we've asked for volunteers for the last seven eight years if you want to volunteer um we're ready we we have we have the facilities we have the people we have we have everything is written down they just have to give us the they just have to give us the the um the vaccine, vaccine. they That's have ultra free they have ultra freezers for the Pfizer. we don't we we don't have that we explain that to to the state that we don't have the uh the one that handles Pfizer, but we have the we have refrigeration to handle the other types of vaccine. Yes, we do. They, we've been plan. This is, I mean, this has been in. We we've been talking about this for years. No, I think, that, and they do great with the flu clinics and everything. It's just the communication to the to the people is where we're looking at. There may yeah. be a problem, like right now. They're testing at UMass. Is that listed on Channel 15? Um, I don't know if it's on Channel 15. It was on the website, though. I know we had that up on the website. That's fine if you've got a computer. If you don't and you're a yep. senior at home and you want to tell them where to test, put it on Channel 15 after Channel 15 is fixed and they're working on it. Okay, Channel 15 was a mess and now they're working on it and it's getting much better. That would be a good place to put for seniors. And, you know, the, like, like I said, the last testing, there were emails and, um, t and texting, but no phone calls. And 
a lot of the seniors may not have smartphones that they or do texting yeah, and stuff. True. No. So that's that's sort of what I'm talking about is is just having the communication part of it in place before it's the general public has to go or phase two. I'm I'm pretty sure you guys can get hold of the first responders. Yeah. And, I, and, and the medical people. That shouldn't be hard. It it looks right. like where it, you don't have to put that on channel 15, but you may for seniors. I mean, we're clearly not going to have access to people's medical records for things like comorbidity and things like that. That's something that we simply, for obvious reasons, wouldn't have. But, um, you know, wherever we can, I'm, I'm sure we'll try to get information out. And did we put the testing on Channel 15, do you know, Jeff? No, I don't okay. think so, but we can. Uh, okay. We can keep I can that in mind. To Jonathan and Chris about. Yeah, going forward. Okay, as long as uh, Jonathan's been doing a great job trying to fix it, but yep. like they were, I just kicked in again because they were like four days when it was on one slide and nobody did anything. So they're working on it and it's looking much better and it's getting more useful, but somebody has to keep up with them and say, make sure that you do this because it could be an important communication for a segment of Sunderland residents. I would agree. We try to use every channel that we have. And inevitably, no matter what we use, there's always somebody who doesn't get something or doesn't look at one channel or another. And it's always a challenge. Mm -hmm. You can also put the sign board up in the center of town, too. Exactly. That would, that that would, would be another great. thing. Yep. Yep. That's, that's another one. You know, a redundancy yep. is wonderful. It's, it's an interesting yep. question, though, just raised uh, in, you know, somebody with comorbidity, how do you know? And that's sort of that, one of those last mile problems. Right. Is um, if somebody doesn't have a regular physician or is in between physicians or isn't up to date, how do, how does, uh, how do we reach those people? And, uh, that's, that's a good point. And a lot of that has, is just normal communication problems that in a way yeah. don't have anything to do with this, but, this affects that and that, that's always a constant problem and and i'll be quite frank too a lot of the we're lucky we have a consistent administration at the state level but um at the federal level the back and forth and miscommunication the changing of messages and the ineptitude there has not helped at all the situation and and frankly we're all kind of learning on this unfortunately this is the first time that most of us have had to go through something like this so if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah, please. Could could we could we uh, dust off? I'm looking across the room since I'm in I'm in the big office that's full of binders, not the yeah. power office that Tom's in, <laughs> where all the votes take place. That's right. But I see the four sept binders here, and if I could ask uh, uh, Jeff uh, to work with getting the communication plan for how the town communicates to, the, to its residents in the case of an emergency. I think that's the mechanism we're talking about here. There are multiple layers of communication, including going door to door. They're yep. all laid out in that SEPT binder that's right there and uh, ensure that uh, we can address Larry and Phyllis's concern about how it gets out there. Yep, that's a good point. There's nothing, there's no, there's, there's nothing to remake. It's in a big book right over there. Right. Great. All you have to do is get the book out and get it in line. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and exactly. we're all set. <laughs> That's exactly. we're, we're looking for it. Like I said, you know, Channel 15 should be good. Yep. But it wasn't. And nobody addressed yeah. it. I addressed it in October. And then I had to do it again in December. Right. And they're getting much better. Yep. But it should, you know, in the book, it'll say go to Channel 15. Well, actually, that doesn't it mentions... work if the book isn't there. It, it actually, it actually the station isn't working. Sure. The, the, some of it's Channel 15, some of it's website, some of it's CT Connect, some of it actually is door to door by zone. The town's broken apart. It's it's pretty well thought out. And, and I believe in there lies the answer to your question, as well as the path that we should take um, when it comes time to communicate broadly, whether it's this or whether it's an emergency. Hey, just please open the book before phase two, and we thank you very much. <laughs> well, we, uh, I think the last time I can recall that we've had to dig that deep was when we had the um, the blizzard on Halloween uh, back in, what was it, 2010, I think? We had to go I remember, door to door. I remember yeah. knocking on doors that night. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> oh, And I'll, I'll make sure also to, to loop it, the Board of Health in, because they're 
you know, the, mo the most involved in getting the most up-to-date information. So make sure we're working with them to communicate the right message correctly. Exactly. Right. Yep. Because I think as a general rule for something like this, we, you know, the, the website, Channel 15. Um, CT Connect. Know, see, right. Those are like the, the, the three key things that, you know, ways we use. And then depending on the issue, maybe the message board, you know. Yep. Code Red works. If that's, you, that's, that's code connect, code red, but, but code red, you know, do you still yet know how many people are on code red? What percentage of the town actually signed up for it? Um, Can we get that information from Monday, Jeff? Probably find out. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, I checked recently and it, it stayed about uh, steady. It, I think it's about 900. Of how many uh, people? Uh, 900 out of how, 30, how have 36. You have about 38. Well, there's 900 telephone numbers. Oh, so, so, right. so there's so that. There, so don't forget, there, you can have three or four people living at a house. There's 3,800, no. approximately 3,800 people living in Sunderland. I thought there was like 1,200 or 1,500 houses in town. Yeah. Or dwelling dwelling units. Excuse me. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. All good points. <clears throat> um, any other updates, Lori, at all? Or all right, we'll keep our fingers crossed, you know. Because I, I would I would imagine that we'll start to see the trickle in from any effects from um, holiday. And New Year's, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'll keep my fingers crossed for low numbers. Everybody I talked to said they had a quiet New Year's, so let's hope that <laughs> hope that stayed that way. Yep. You know, any uh, anything else uh, update wise, Jeff at all on COVID? Uh, just wanted to mention that last week's report, um, Sunderland dropped out of the green and even better position into the gray. So, <laughs> okay. all uh, right. But just just the latest color update. There you go. I think we'll stay in the gray for the next report too. Okay. Good. And please don't anyone look for any sense in the gray in the color scheme because it, <laughs> there's no normal progression of colors there. No. Just keep bringing us good news, EMD. That's right. That's right. We'll try. <laughs> so, Thank and, you. We appreciate it. Yep. Not notification. You know, the, the question about notifications is a, a very we 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 have struggled with notification all along. Right. But it, not just with this. Uh, when vaccines and and stuff are oh, available, yeah. I, I I can tell you I can tell you and and Lori knows this very well that we we have we have we meaning elected people um, and and appointed in government have have been have been over the last two two weeks or so have been very or more a little bit longer have been very concerned because we did not really see any action moving on the vaccination of right. of our EMS people that that has been a tremendous concern of ours because there are there are frontline workers and all of a and all of a sudden I would say late the latter part of last week all of a sudden we learned that January the January 11th then it was a week of January 11th EMS okay. EMS and first responders were going to start getting um, made available the uh, the vaccinations, and and then that that and 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 why it's difficult is it is, is things cha things are changing as before the ink is dry on a on a news release, and now now we find out that University of Massachusetts petitioned the latter part of last week. To become a vaccination site for first responders, and that was just granted today. That that so now the university starting January 11th is going to be a vaccination site for first responders. If you asked us, if you asked us six hours ago where first responders were going to get vaccinated, we'd have said um, we think Greenfield is going to offer through the community health program is going to offer, but all but it's changing. It, it's changing as because a we don't control the distribution of the vaccines. It's it's controlled by the state, and and now we know that the state is putting it up. I think it's 50 locations for vac vaccinations of first responders, 
And I'm sure when it moves into the public, you know, and it, when it moves into the greater public, that that number is going to expand and there's going to be different. And that's when we're actually going to start doing our EDS and put EDSs up and start doing that. So it, it's hard right now. I, and I understand the, the questions, but it's hard to give direct answers because things are changing. Oh. And, and oh. notification, we will do the, the notifications. We will do the code reds and and the, those other things. And, and and again, it's not a bad idea to send out, Jeff, if, uh, send out a code, code red to let people know that they can get um, testing at the university, walk, you know, community testing at, at UMass. That, that's, that's, that's not a bad thing. You know, the more information right now, the better. Yeah, I think I think one did go out, text and email, but it, we could certainly do a phone call too. And, you know, one of the things that I was just thinking about as we were talking through it is is maybe um, we, we could have a, a general thing because it really is fact specific depending on your age and if you have comorbidities, but say this is the phase we're in, if you believe that, you know, and here is who's in this phase. If you believe that you're one of these people, contact your physician because right. they're the ones who will set up the, the vaccination for you for the, for the vast majority of people. And, um, you know, and, and then as the phases change, we just change the messaging a little bit, but it's still contact your physician to, to schedule your vaccine. I, I think you hit on a very important point, Jeff, right? Because that really should, for all of us, be in some ways our first questioning point of contact on, about that because they're probably the, the best position at least to, to, to understand how each individual is going to be affected by it, right? So that means that because we're select, when we should, or select board, we should be the, we're going to get it. We're first, what they call it, continuance of governance? No. We're no. going to be first in line? <laughs> You're a line jumper. Don't do it. One A. Yeah. We, we're not going to be line jump. Oh, no, no line jumping. You know, all, the, all the guys that say that the, do, there's nothing to worry about, and yeah, they line guys, up for their shots you know. first. That that's oh, okay. Um, I guess I, I misunderstood something. And, oh, and geez, you, I'm, get, I'm getting political now. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and I was kind of thinking too because uh, the, the Larry, you guys had a question about, um, you know, how many people were signed up, you know, maybe at some point what we could do is put our, our lovely mobile sign unit out there and at some point to encourage people to sign up for it because that's uh, the, um, that is only as good as whoever signs up for it. So if you don't sign up for it, it's not going to really do you much good. So I think, you know, maybe we can do a little, um, a little public service announcement to get people to sign up for the first alert too. So, and I mean, the thematically, we want to convey the information that we have. And I think Tom illustrated, as well as Laurie's illustrated, that in particular at this stage, it's still, it's still rapid fire, if you will. Yep. So once it's solidified, communicate to the public. Pretty right. straightforward. Yep. And that's what I was going to say. We're happy to communicate the information we have at the moment. But right. that information changes by the moment. Right. <laughs> and right. You know, there has to be also a little self-responsibility. You know, you pay attention to other news sources too to see when your exactly. time for a vaccination sure. comes. Yep. Great. All right. All right. Well, hopefully next time we'll have some some more good news. So keep That's our up. fingers crossed. Thanks, Lori. Appreciate it. All right. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So next we're on to select board and town administrator updates. <clears throat> so since Tom is up on my upper left, I'll, which might be different for oh, a bit. So I'm, I'm just, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm bothered. I'm, I'm, my, my update is, is I'm bothered. I'm, I'm bothered by um, our founding fathers when they, when they wrote our constitution and even when you go back to the Mayflower Compact, it, it talks about um, voting and the responsibilities of a democracy. And, and, and I, I, I am just so, so um, hurt um, listening to what's going on right now. And I, I, I just want, I, I hope, I hope that 
people don't lose faith in democracy because I truly believe it's the best form of government that we have. Um, and and I, I, I just, I, I never thought I would see it in my lifetime. Um, I, I never thought I, I never thought I would see it in this country because it's the foundation of what keep and 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 it's one of the things that the rest of the world probably least understands about the United States of America is how we can bring so many different cultures together and be as successful as as we have been. Um, most other most other countries don't don't understand how that how that happened. And we, we embrace our differences, typically. Oh. But that, that's, that, seemed to, that seemed to have has changed. I, I, I still believe democracy. And, and I'll tell you what, if it means that from now on, everybody that votes, and we have to be like Iraq, that we have to go and put our finger in a, 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 in a container of, of, no. of, of purple, pink, and, and dip our index finger in, I, I don't care. But democracy is the way, it, it is the finest form of government that that's out there, um, and I I'm just I, I just wish our our elected officials in Washington D.C. and other places would understand that. I, I I'm, I'm I'm so and 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 it gets worse and it gets worse every day. Yep. And I and I just pray that this country. Um, that some some cooler heads prevail in our capital. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're Sorry. welcome. No, that's all right. I, I, it, it, I, bother, it really bothers. I, I can empathize. I, I I I'll just say I have a we have a personnel committee meeting next week, and then just just to briefly add on to that, I haven't lost faith in democracy, but I've clearly lost faith in a, certainly a large section of a particular political party that is um, basically acting as if they live in a totalitarian society where they can just cha uh, change votes and not respect the sanctity of the vote. So that's all I'll have to say about that. There you go, Scott, I'll pass the baton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say that we have a capital planning meeting tentatively scheduled for the 13th. I think that's a Wednesday, a week from Wednesday. It's our first review of the requests, as well as how we did last year with projects that were appropriated for. Uh, and on the macro level, I would uh, suggest that uh, what you're seeing is an elitist power grab and people could care less about how anybody votes as long as they have power and money. That nail got hit on the head. <laughs> and, 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 yep. and if, if I could, one, one, I, I did forget one important thing, yep. Dave. Um, I, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, uh, offer my condolence to the Waleco family. Yep. Um, mm, Victor, Mr. Mr. Passed away the, and so he was one of my first baseball coaches <laughs> um, uh. and, and it, and, and, and sometimes, sometimes you, you, you want to, people to get get involved there's 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 life lessons that were passed on to me through people like coach Waleco. um and and i think that our our teachers and our coaches and our our dance instructors and and the people that deal with our young they they're they they, they affect are how those people, our children grow sure. and, and the lessons that they carry with them. And Mr. Waleco was one of those people in my life. Um, and, you know, he passed away. Um, and, and I just, um, it, it just, it just, re it's just reflecting about what good things people do. And he was a good, he was a good man. Oh. Thank you. <clears throat> And kind of a, um, just to tack on your point, uh, Scott, it is that time. I'm starting to see some um, budget requests and things roll in. So yep. now that we're into January, we'll be sprinting hard into the budget and town meeting 
season. So could that I ask time Mr. Of year. Chair that next week on the agenda we have a discussion about uh, postponing town meeting to a later date, at yep. least the discussion. Yeah, that's a good we idea. Probably should include town clerk and moderator at some point uh, yeah. sooner rather than later. Uh, we now have our town meeting, annual town meeting is of course by bylaw. Uh, we were allowed last year to postpone it and the election. And the way that the state budget process has unfolded, who knows where we're gonna become our uh, statutory uh, required date through town bylaw. We may wanna at least have the discussion. Yep. Uh, that's an excellent point. Well, we, uh, I guess we also have to talk to the town clerk about how we're going to do our caucus. Right. right. Yep. Uh, all of it, Tom, because you're right. Yeah. It spirals all the way through. Exactly. Right? Yep. All right. What's the procedure there? It's a good question. Um, yep. Can I ask, because next week we have a budget presentation scheduled for uh, Franklin Tech and mm -hmm. the library. Would you still want this on the agenda for next week or do you want it the following week when we don't have any budget presentations? I think the Are following we, week makes sense. The only, well, it'll, be, it'll actually be a week after that or maybe the Tuesday or something because isn't that the 18th of holiday? Yeah, the 18th is, is Martin Luther King Day. Uh, yeah. Tentatively scheduled a meeting for the 19th. Okay. So we have two pretty good sized budget presentations next week then that, that would take up the majority of that time. We want to ensure that yeah. we have plenty of time for both presentation as well as question and answer. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you. It's that time of year. Uh, you know, governance is not always uh, glamour, is it? Uh, the, it's meetings, know, it's reports, right. it's binders. <laughs> yep. And, well, every now and then you get one, somebody who's got the shoe on the podium, but yeah, that yeah. was so 1962. <laughs> It's hard to see up through all these spreadsheets and everything that we're buried in, you know. <laughs> I would say, if I, if I could, one last piece. If anybody takes the time to listen to what Governor Baker said today about uh, current state of affairs and the focus on COVID, I think it was really worth, uh, really worth revisiting. I thought he did a very good job. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Um, did you, I'll turn it over to you, Jeff, if you have any other like general updates at all, or are you good? No, I was just gonna prep the budget presentations next week and okay. um, that's it. Right, that'll keep you out of trouble, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, stay home and work on those. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, and do we have any general public comments as we've kind of reached that that section? I think we sort of had some earlier, but. I don't see anybody else logged in there either. So, all right. Um, and with that, I'll just make a note that our next meeting is scheduled for next Monday, January 11th, at the same time and same channel. And uh, we'll be, we had uh, Frontier and what was the other one, yep. Jeff? Tech School. The Tech School, right? Right, yeah, Franklin Tech and Frank, uh, Library. The Library, yep. And I did see some of their stuff come in, so. <clears throat> all right. Um, otherwise, uh, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. I'll second. All right. All those in favor of adjournment at uh, 1940? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a good night. <laughs>